in my eyes. You were taking that corner too quickly. We must get the police. No, no, no. No, no, wait. I wouldn't do that, Miss Crane. You know me? Well, of course. Everyone knows Barbara Crane. Have you considered the consequences if you get involved in this unfortunate man's death? Involved? I killed him. Only you and I know that. There's no identification, nothing. Just a hobo. Miss Crane... I suggest we forget this accident ever happened. How can I forget it with this man's body lying here? Over there is a sheer drop. It might be days before anyone found it. No. No. If this were to get out, it could finish your career in the theatre. And what a loss that would be. No, stop. Who's going to miss this old failure? If you won't save yourself from the consequences, then I must do it for you. What a wonderful day. Thank you, don't burn your shoulders again. The funny thing, I had become sensitive to violet rays again. Lack of pigment, perhaps. Oh, was that letter from Simon? Mm, that's right. How is he? He says he's rehearsing a new play. He wants me to call in at the theater on Thursday and have lunch with some actress there. Some actress? But Barbara Crane, she's only about the best there is, that's all. And she won't want to have lunch with me. Oh, now you're too sensitive. Remember, you're quite a celebrity, too, now. And anyway, we think that you should go out and relax and enjoy yourself sometimes. We? So that's it. You and Simon cooked this up together. I'd enjoy myself more if I was allowed to concentrate on my work. Like getting myself visible again, for instance. Peter, you're becoming a regular hermit. You've got to face up to life and go out and have some fun. Oh, I'll be the life and soul of the party, all covered in bandages. Mr. Hill. Yes, Mary. Oh, yes, that's right, Dad. Good asking to come in. Mr. Victor Hill. Good evening, Mr. Hill. Thank you for seeing me. Oh, darling, it's been so long. Why didn't you write? Why didn't you send for me? I didn't dare. I'm never alone. He... He... he I'm sorry, Simon. I simply can't remember the lines. We better break for lunch. Okay, everybody, lunch. And don't worry, Tom. It'll be all right. I'll deal with her. Well, you better, because if you don't, we'll have a flop on our hands, and I'm not used to being in flops. After all, I have my reputation to think of. Of course, Tom. I quite understand your concern. Thank you. If that's a crack, I don't think it's funny. Pompous young fool. What is the matter with her, Simon? Oh, I don't know. Two days ago, she was word perfect. Well, she's a joy to act with. 
See you later. Oh, Walter, don't hurry back. I'm going to rehearse Bob and Tom for a couple of hours. Okay. Peter, nice to see you. See me? I wish you really could see me. Yeah. Still, I'm not the only one with troubles. Was that Barbara Crane? Yes. She has quite a temper. <laughs> Yes? Miss Barbara Crane. Yes? Tell me, is your conscience troubling you? Who is that? You won't know me, Miss Crane. I happened to be taking a walk on the Tiff Road to Brandon two nights ago when I witnessed a fatal accident. Yes, that gives you something to think about, doesn't it, Miss Crane? Who is that? That's not important. What is important is that you killed a man. You sure it's not just nerves? No, not with Barbara. She's a real trooper. Couldn't you ask her what's the matter? Ask her? I begged her to tell me. She just shuts up like a clown. What well, could I help, Simon? Maybe you could. But to have to admit that you threw his body over a cliff. And who knows? You might even be charged with murder. We all have to pay for our sins, Miss Crane. And you're going to pay. That's it. That is if you want me to keep my mouth shut. Very well. What do you want? A thousand pounds. I have no choice. I'll have to. Just a moment, please. Who is it? It's me, Simon. Oh, come in, Simon. I brought along an old friend of mine to meet you. Peter Brady, Barbara Crane. How do you do, Miss Crane? Peter's the celebrated invisible man. We wondered whether you'd like to have lunch with us. Oh, thank you, but I already have an engagement. I brought Peter here especially to meet you. I'm sorry, Mr. Brady. Oh, Simon, I'm sorry about this morning. I know I behaved very badly. Please forgive me. I'll make it up to you. Barbara, I think you're in trouble. Peter can help you if only you'll let him. Help? Who said I needed help? Oh, please don't be offended, Miss Crane. But you see, because I'm invisible, I have been able to help people in a number of ways. Really, Simon? You come in here with a complete stranger in that fantastic makeup and expect me to pour out the story of my life. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Brady. Well, we tried. Maybe I can still help by using my invisibility to find out what's wrong. Yes. We can catch her at the bank. My lab closed. Quick. Can I change? There. There'll be no one here. They've all gone out to lunch. Here, catch. And unbutton it for me. <laughs> Thank you.
forget you. Why are you here? I find myself in a little difficulty. Not to put too fine a point on it, I'm being blackmailed. You are? Somebody observed your accident and my poor efforts to help you. What are you going to do? Oh, unfortunately, I'm in a state of complete financial <laughs> maladjustment. You mean you're broke? <laughs> so? It occurred to me that you might possibly let me have the sum demanded. You planned this? You're the blackmailer. Let's say I'm a humble cog in a smooth running machine. My chief, uh, by whose orders I'm here, is more than a little displeased. The thousand pounds you left turned out to be just waste paper. I went to the bank. I put the money in a bag. A thousand pounds. I know. I followed you to the bank and to the station. I can't imagine how you made the switch. I never made a switch. Unfortunately, I am suspected of having made it. My chief, I'm afraid, lacks trust in me. He's threatened to get rid of me in an unpleasantly violent manner if I don't find the missing money. He's waiting for it now. I don't believe you. I've paid a thousand pounds already and I don't intend to give you any more. I'm not going to be blackmailed for the rest of my life. I'd rather admit what's happened and take the consequences. I beg you not to. The consequences are likely to be even more disastrous for me than for you. That's just too bad. Goodbye. I'm pleading for my life, Miss Crane. How very original. No. Nice knowing you. Miss Crane, one thousand pounds. What is all this? It's me, Brady. Yes, it is me. You know, you could have saved us an awful lot of trouble if you told us you were being blackmailed. Where did you get this? I was in the back of your car when you drove from the bank. So that's what happened to the money. That poor man. What poor man? This one. He's the one who got me into all this. He was killed because the money disappeared. They thought he'd taken it. They? Was he one of the blackmailers? I almost wish I'd given it to him. Would have saved his life. Hello? Miss Barbara Crane? Oh. It's you. Have you seen the evening paper? You notice what happened to your cliff-top friend? You murdered him. He was a thief. He took your thousand pounds. He didn't. Oh, then it was you. Pity. He was quite useful. I must add that to your bill. Two thousand pounds. Unless you pay up, you realize that you will be killed too. I'll pay. Anything you ask. Where can we meet and when? I don't like this sudden eagerness. I'll make the date when I'm good and ready. Oh, 
forgive this intrusion, Miss Train. I am Arthur Arthurson. In spite of my many years as a leading theatrical photographer, I don't think we've met before. It is my pleasure to remedy that omission. Oh, uh, please forgive me. I'm rather busy at the moment. Uh, I'm here to take a few dressing room stills of you. Uh, nothing cheesecakey, mind you. No, more of a nature. I'm sorry, but not but now. Publicity, my dear Miss Train. Publicity, the lifeblood of our profession. Uh, not even the greatest of us can afford to deny it. Please. Not now. Tomorrow, perhaps. Oh, yes. Oh, just a moment, Mr. Arthurson. Are you by any chance a, a, a ventriloquist, Miss Train? No, it's me, Peter Brady, the Invisible Man. What? Is this some kind of a joke? No. Look. Oh, my dear sir, uh, let me shake you by the invisible hand. And now, what can I do for you? Not a photograph, I presume. <laughs> Mr. Arthurson, you say you've been a leading stage photographer for years. I do not say it. Everyone says it. It is one of the facts of theatrical life. Then you must have taken many pictures of actors in various parts. Thousands, dear boy. Uh, tens of thousands. And you've kept some of them? Some of them. All of them. Cross-indexed, filed, preserved for posterity. Mr. Arthurson, would you mind if I take a oh, look? I'm trying yes. to trace a particular Certainly. man. Certainly. I'm afraid you'll have to look through all these files, dear boy. The fellow you described might be any one of a hundred different actors. In fact, most of them are put on face blunders and dress themselves like that at some time or another. Thank you, Mr. Arthurson. I'll start right away. Okay, let's take it back to Tom's entrance. Mr. Victor Hill. Good evening, Mr. Hill. Thank you for seeing me. Victor, darling, it's been so long. Why didn't you write? Why didn't you send for me? I didn't dare. I'm never alone. He watches me all the time. It's the... I'm sorry, Simon. It's no use. He's just gone. If you ask me, it's time you went, too. Never in all my years in the theater have I met anybody so unprofessional. Who do you think you are coming here flaunting your inefficiency amongst artists who believe in doing their jobs? Listen, this play's going to fold so quickly you won't see it go, and it'll be nobody's fault but yours. Look here, Tom, you can't speak to Miss Crane like that. Yeah, who says so? I say so. Miss Crane is a very great artist, and we're all privileged to be here with her. Just because she forgets a line or two? The miracle will be when she remembers a line or two. Now, look, I'm warning you. Out of my way, you old ham. All right, everybody, that's enough. Keep the drama to the audience. Back at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Rehearsals are finished. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Miss Crane, but I just couldn't bear to hear him talking to you like that. It was very good of you to come to my rescue. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, could you give me a lift tonight? You know, I think it would do you good to have someone with you in the car. That's very kind of you. I would like that. Good. I'll see you at the stage door. Oh, Tom, I'm sorry about it. Yes? Oh, hello, Miss Crane? Yes? Peter Brady. Oh, hello. Any news? Yes, I've got it. I know who it is.
left. Pretend to comply. And then? Trick him into an admission and turn him over to the police. Found an excellent plan. But haven't you first got to discover who he is? Oh, um, I already know that. You do? Why are you stopping? It was just here that the accident took place. I want to show you exactly what happened. Thank you. I should be very interested. It was just here I was supposed to have hit the man. Suppose. Well, I didn't see him. I only felt the bump as I went over something. Most upsetting. And the driver of the other car came over, found the man was dead, and threw the body over the cliff. There. There's a ledge. I didn't come up to the edge before. The body would have landed there. That makes it all different. How? The man must have been alive. They'd have found the body soon enough if it had been there. Go on. Which means it was all a put-up job to make me think I'd killed him. So that I could be blackmailed. Most ingenious, I must say. Yes, very ingenious indeed. You ought to be congratulated on having conceived and carried it out. Well, it's nice to be complimented on work well done. Not so well done. You haven't got the money yet. Too true. Never will get it now. Because I shall have to kill you. I'm sure you understand the necessity. But one thing I do promise you. You won't land on that ledge. Look at this. Another one of Mr. Arthurson's theatrical studies. Have you seen him before? Why, yes. It's the man I'm supposed to have killed. Our old friend in the back, Walter Manson, in one of his most successful character parts. At least very interesting. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Green. Oh, yes, you do. Go on stage opening night and give the performance of your career. You bet I will. I'll take you up on that lunch date, too. Thank you, Miss Gray. Look forward to that. Really be a pleasure. Thank you.